Tempest by Scotty Wilson. Prologue. The year is 128 of the First Age. Only 54 years after the War of the Towers changed the world. A young wizard of the White Tower in Escadia, the last bastion of the new priesthood of the God of Life, Eon. Not that enslavers, demon worshippers, don't have agents running around all over the world. And home to the future champion of the new world to come. Architecture is simple in this day and age. Prominent, imposing, but not so elaborate. Even white towers of a simple design, though it extends almost to the clouds. The dark city of Murak has a more elaborate style of building, though it's somewhat creepy to look at. Ebony Tower is much less tall than its rival in Escadia, but it's much wider and can accommodate just as much inside of its walls, if not more. The world is somewhat oppressed territorially by its priesthoods. Wizards are becoming more trusted and are more involved with the people in politics. The settlements and kingdoms outside of the Big Three are being ruled by corrupt kings, legions of mercenary armies loyal only to themselves. In a lab close to the top of White Tower, just below the lower room, Archmage Lancaster and his star pupil Ethan are speaking. The window is lit from a beautiful midday. Do you know the history behind the great power we, we protect here in White Tower, Ethan? Says the Archmage in a calm voice. Ethan's eyes deviate. The Archmage speaks. The mysterious mortal we call first gave up his heart so that, to eons so that we may be immortal in our studies and our duty to help the world by binding our life to it. Some say it is directly linked to Eon somehow, yet even we do not know how this came to be. Don't the priests know, Archmage? says Ethan with a smirk. No, of course not. Only the Grand Council of Mages are allowed in the room with the artifact. So studying it, studying it is our job alone, Ethan. Do you understand? Ethan looked down a bit and said, Yes, Archmage, I understand. Ethan then made his way toward the lower room above the highest the student can ever go in the tower. There he studied all the tower's records on the heart of eternity. He learned of its power to make those with magical blood immortal, so long as they do not kill anyone, as that would be opposing Movak, the god of death and cruelty. He also read how the numerous lesser gods created all of the magical beings in the world, the fairies, the demons, and even the dragons, which are said to be pets of the demons. Those who protect the heart of eternity and live in the safety of the tower truly have the potential to live forever. But how do those in Ebony Tower live forever also, if they do not share this thing in common? He thought to himself, My fellow magisters rarely ever talk about that place, but I know from reading in here all about their commonality with us. A long and busy day befell White Tower as studies endured and the things finally wound down at night. And all the mages were either retiring to their chambers, doing their experiments, or both. Later in the early hours of the morning, Archmage Lancaster walks the halls of the chamber floor for a quick check of the rooms and doors. Notices Ethan's op open partly, and opens his door to find him gone. There is a note written in ethereal ink on a piece of parchment floating that reads, the ebony tower awaits me. He then notices traces of blood on the floor, faint, but there. Convinced that a black mage could never get that high up in the tower without being caught, he lets out a sigh and prepares for the task ahead. He is loyal to his student and will tell the other wizards that he joined the feral priest of the wilds to aid the settlement of Hypos at his parents' request. That was the last they saw of each other, at least for now.